What's up, people? GNR TV, streaming done right. It has all the channels that you would want. You know, the regular channels, channels from out of state, pay-per-views, sports, the movie channels, porn. It has over 2,000 channels in general. Over 2,000 channels. $20 a month for two devices now. Not one, but two devices for 20 bucks, and you get all that amazing stuff. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, there's no sports right now. There's not really many pay-per-views. Well, guess what? There is sports because UFC is back. And there's pay-per-views because guess what? UFC is back, and the rest of the sports will be back eventually, and it's worth it. This app is freaking amazing. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. I've had it for a little over a year now. I'm never going to get rid of it, and I love it. I love it so much. GNR TV, streaming done right. If you don't have it, you need to get it. And enjoy the rest of the show. Let's get slicing and dicing with Sir Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember, I'll see you in your nightmares. Jason's mask. Yeah, we do. So, anyways, uh, yeah, we do. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> he did it. He peed. He pee pees on people. Really? Um. <laughs> Not Ja Rule's fault, Henry. No matter what you say. I'm just letting you know that right now. You gotta stop blaming Ja Rule for your problems. What are you talking about? <laughs> you know exactly what I'm talking about. What's everybody drinking and smoking tonight? Got a big fat butt rolled up. <laughs> nice. Some aspirin in there. <laughs> you know, up some mushrooms. You know, for the stomach. Mountain Dew. <laughs> some cool like that. Yes, yes. I got some sweet tea as well. I got the gate splat. I got soft ass Coors Light and some water. Yes. Lovely, oh, beverage, lovely beverage you have to your left or your right or whatever, your front or your back, wherever you put it. Uh, it's uh, yeah. it's a, can- a cannabis infuser here. You know, that's awesome. Cannabis infuser yeah. here. Gotta yeah. love Colorado. It's uh, Bubba Kush here. Nice. I got like four or five different things rolled up in here. Nice. Very nice. We're going to be getting some crazy shit here in about 20 minutes. If not sooner, I hope so. I hope so. Nothing's weirder than the Huh? I said nothing's weirder than those mannequins. Though. Oh, dude. Yeah, yeah. It's like right from the kid. Like, I think it's like a ghost. Like, when, um, you know, when the dude was going to get the air for his tire, he was in the gas station. Mm-hmm. And all that shit's flying off the walls and everything. It's gross. I know. I thought that, too. Like, I was talking to John. I was like, Wait a second, man. Is this is this a slasher movie? Or, like, is this dude just, like, able to summon these spirits? And then you find out later there's all kinds of other crazy shit. But <clears throat> yeah. The first scene was scary when the dude put his arm through the door and he just got stuck there and then all the shit started flying at him. Yeah. Oh, I'm, bitch. I'm in an earthquake. Someone help! Like, no, dude. <laughs> Caucasians, I have a question for you guys. How come in these types of cities, you guys feel you could, like you'd go into an empty cab? It'll be like a cabin, a house, or whatever. If the doors are locked, you motherfuckers. <laughs> Hello, is anybody home? Oh, yeah, dude. Home? We're gonna go in there, man. See what's going on. Like, we're fucking curious. We can't help it. We don't do that because we're scared of each other. Like, <laughs> if some random nigga just walks in the house, you know, there's going to be some problems. <laughs> no one's crazier than a white person. So, like, we're good. Like, we're going to go in that situation. <laughs> we think we're untouchable. And, uh, why, you know, there's Dahmer and all. Cool. We all got Dahmer going on. And <laughs> messed up. It's messed up. <laughs> I'm white and black, so I would have been in there and stole an Xbox and left. You were ready to stole an Xbox and left? <laughs> <laughs> in 1979, I bet. 
There's a guy with a stolen Xbox in 1979. <laughs> That's impressive. That's impressive fever. <laughs> so what did everybody think of this movie, though? Dude, this movie is the shit. <laughs> I saw this movie, like, <clears throat> maybe five or six years ago for the first time. Because the cover, excuse me, shit's wrong. Uh, the cover looked like the Pretty Woman mask from uh, the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And I was like, is this is like some sort of fucking off. Uh, what the hell is going on? Is this a slasher, like Greg was saying? Yeah. To find out it's just like a House of Wax meets Maniac kind of crazy crossover. This dude that likes to dress up and play pretend. And he also, that mask is like Corey Taylor's mask. Yeah, it, it, yeah, dude, yeah. It's, it's scary looking. Like, all the masks he wears in this. There's a scene where he's dressed up like an Abe Lincoln type character. He's like putting that plaster on that lady's face and explaining to her like how she's about to die. That's, oh, yeah. And it's scarier because of what he's wearing. Like, not only you're getting told how you're about to die, like, what kind of torture is that? But like, that was the way you're seeing it being said to you has got to be like, holy shit, get plaster over my goddamn eyes. He does good work, though. I will say he does very, very good work. And I feel like these Hollywood women, if they see this movie now, they're going to be, yeah, I want to go I want to go see Dr. That Crazy Guy because he does some good work. I'm going to look oh, yeah. like That's a movie for my whole life, even though I'm dead. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I like the Taurus track. Good. This movie was definitely lacking in Bush. It was what? It was lacking in Bush. Ah. <laughs> we had no nudity. Hey, we had top of the meetings, guys. We can't be all, you know, we can't be. Which, technically, there were women under the mannequin body, so technically, we got titties. If you want to think about it like that. <laughs> You know how I went there? Yeah. Genius. Yeah. Well, you, you had a lot of mannequin tit. That's for sure. Yeah. You know, if you rub one out to him a couple of times, that's that's fine. It doesn't matter. Is it mannequin fine? Porn. You jack off to mannequins, dude? I didn't say me. I'm just saying in general. No, that's... I thought pretty sure that's what was... Did you... Like mannequins without arms and shit? Did they just put, like, tank tops on? That's even more fucked up, though. Now yeah. you're the maniac. You know there was a couple of those mannequins that had old drunk <laughs> <laughs> Of course. <laughs> I get it. How else you can get him to stand up? You know, you got to put something. Yeah. You, uh, he, seemed, he seems pretty crafty. I'm sure he could have figured it out. <laughs> and, yeah, but sometimes that's the hardest part, though, is getting your... <laughs> It's like getting your figures to stand up. You know, you have all these awesome figures, and you got to move them around a bunch of times before they stand. Oh, true, I hear that, man. I get the neck of stands. That's what works for me. I free ball. They fall. They fall. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, man! Fuck, man! It's been a while since we all fucking recorded together. Yeah. Do you? Uh, you lost weight. I didn't. I'm trying to, but I didn't yet. You look, you look like, uh, maybe it's because it's like not so close to your face. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure, though. Could be, could be, could be. No, you've lost weight, bro. For sure. <laughs> maybe. Can't tell with that backdrop, that's for sure. <laughs> you guys all look good. <laughs> this, is, this is genius back here. Yes. I think I'm gonna start it, look, it looks like a Cypress Hill album. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, Cypress Hill. Henry looks like Be Real, kind of. <laughs> so it works. <laughs> oh, shit, yo, if we all put out an album together, that would be the weirdest thing ever. We have some dope name like Chainsaw Massacre. We I would do like a mannequin rap one for sure. Oh hell yeah, we call it mannequin hand jobs. <laughs> hey, if it has the it's fit like the a Dutch rudder. You need to stick your dick right in and just and just move the arm yourself. <laughs> That's, That's what I'm mannequins are always like the kids uh, fetish. 
when you were little, you always ran up to the mannequin, you looked under the dress. Come on, who hasn't done that? <laughs> my sister had a my size Barbie. I'll say nothing else. <laughs> I respect it. I respect it. All right, congrats, you I back. remember that Barbie. <laughs> you had a Barbie? I, I remember that one. Oh, sure. it. It, was, it was fucked up. She owes me twelve fifty. <laughs> Holy shit. Mannequins are fucking scary, though, dude. Like, have you ever, like, walked past a mannequin in a store? Like, you're in J.C. JCPenney getting some jorts, and you pass, and you're like, oh, fuck, excuse me. Oh, you're not real. I love those videos where people dress up like mannequins and jump out with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude. It's like, like you are saying, it could be a fetish, or, like, some people, it's super big fear. I think there was, I think it was a Twilight Zone episode with the mannequins come to life in the department store. Yeah. Chasing the woman. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Speak to the manager. That's that's awesome. Nightmare shop hats, guys. You can get the merch. Hey, look at other like you can. Yeah. Oh, dude, it's beautiful. Oh. <laughs> it's nice. Illuminating in life. Or don't t- don't say nothing. We're coming out with uh, purple <laughs> and black ones too. Don't say anything, though, people. <laughs> that's, that's dope. I'm gonna want a purple and black one. Hey, um, speaking of which, though, speaking of purple and black and horror. See where I'm going with this, guys? I know. Uh, he's going to dress up as Barney? No. Baroness? I'm going to dress up as Ja Rule and start the rat career over. And Henry's going to come out with a disc record to 50 Cent, so I don't have to do it. Don't know who Henry's going to come out as yet. But <laughs> I guess 50. But uh, anyways, no, I was going to say cons and shit are canceled, but you guys have a con coming up, right? Yeah, uh, Days of the Dead, July 17th through 18th in Indianapolis. Um, still going as of now. They uh, announced yesterday and today they're going over guidelines with the hotel to see how, you know, as safe as possible they can make it um, for everyone to go and, like, the requirements of what you got to do for get in for guests, vendors, and, uh, you know, people attending the con. So, um, fingers crossed it's still going on. I think it'd be good for people to kind of you know, enjoy themselves and enjoy themselves after a lot of hard shit this year, um, but in a safe way. And they'll let horror kind of be that conduit. But I hope it goes on. Um, and then we have Midwest Monster Fest in September still going on. And uh, we also have the uh, Vampire Ball. So what's that? That's also September. September in St. Louis. <laughs> yep. That's awesome. So, as yeah, tickets are all on sale for all those. You can find all that stuff at thenightmareshoplc.com. Go to our events tab at the top on the homepage and all the information and then where you can go to get even further information for all those cons and shows that we're going to do. So, right now, it's all on. And if you're local, we'll bring it to you. We mass up, sanitize down. That's dope. Sounds like you get a rub on the rub down. Oh, dude, yeah, I mean, that's extra. That's an extra shipping fee. Hey, speaking of rubdowns, in this movie, I was very disappointed that, well, we didn't see any real titties. We seen the manny, manny titties. But the the one brunette that had, like, the, the top with the light blue and the light blue shorts, mm-hmm. I hope we can pop that at least once. Huh? She was wearing a brother. No, I don't think any of them were. Seen the nips. <laughs> now, did you guys watch this on uh, DVD or Blu-ray or download? Tubi. Well, I watched it on Shutter. Same. <laughs> yeah, I got. If you're wondering, the DVD is uncut, where the D- the Blu-ray is cut. Oh, cool. So yeah. what happens in the DVD? It doesn't happen in the Blu-ray. Or- well, I don't know. I don't have the Blu-ray. I have the DVD and. I was talking to a bunch of my buddies, and I assume the scenes are taken out. I don't know exactly what scenes because I don't own the blue, but the DVD itself runs 90 something minutes, and I heard the Blu ray runs less than that. Oh, that's, that's crazy. That's cool. Like, that's actually kind of cool to know. I, I, I want to check it out now. <laughs> yeah, so I got to take a look to see what the, what the runtime is on the Blu ray. Look it up. Was there any nipples, Matt? No. No nipples. Almost got a sale. Almost got a sale. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure each and every one of bought it just because of, the, of a nipple or two. Slump. There might be a couple slips. We'll 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 really look into it. <laughs> Check it out. 
Well, I'm in that. I just watched Blood Games the other night, and that had a lot of tits. Blood Games? Blood Games. What is it about the menstrual cycle? No, a women's softball team plays against a bunch of rednecks, and, of course, the girls win, but the rednecks go after them. They go after them in the woods and whatnot. There's uh, a lot of nudity, rape, uh, but people get killed on both sides. Uh, one of them's a hunter, and they're hunting them girls down, but the girls fight back with baseball bats and shit because they're a softball team. What did you watch it on? I had the Blu-ray. just came out That's on vinegar Syndrome. That's awesome. Check that out. Yeah, I really like what in the 90s. I really like what Vinegar Syndrome's been doing. We need to kind of look at that more, but uh, we saw a few Vinegar Syndrome. Yeah, but like it would be, it's like you know, it's kind of a cult thing. Like people are more willing to, for whatever reason, like to look into a Vinegar Syndrome movie, whether they hear good or bad things <clears throat> about their presentation, okay. style of movie, and the quality of it. I would pick up a lot of their their films. Uh, their picture quality is fantastic. They do a lot of great uh, special features to the blues. So they do, they do yeah, a great they, job. Yeah, they do. We had uh, Don't Go Into the Woods. Ah, great one. And Hobgoblins. Um, I really wanted to check out that Spookies. So, oh, Spookies is awesome. I used to have that on a, a bootleg. And when they released that, I freaking shit a brick. I had to buy it. Awesome. I'll have to check it out. It's actually done by several directors where there was issues with making of the movie. So you could tell different parts where it was serious and got kind of goofy, where a different direction went from two different directors. That's cool. Word to Big Bird. Word up, yo. That <laughs> was very funny. <laughs> <laughs> Henry, what are you doing? <laughs> You're going to take a jump. No, I'm going to go to the bathroom with you, are you? Are you taking a poop, dude? I mean, that's cool, I guess, but... My two-year-old just started saying do and it's the funniest thing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Tourist trap, tourist trap. I forget Chuck Connors was awesome in this as the the main almost like bag. He's the bad guy, but you don't know that until near the end. You kind of they lean you towards everything. Like you know, here's the brother, here's this and that. I thought he did a great job playing the crazy man. He he really did. He was by far the scariest part of the movie. You know, just like even like before we you like you found out it was him. Like the dude was still creepy and so. Mm-hmm. I didn't trust him through the whole, like, <clears throat> from the beginning, I didn't trust him in the first scene. Yeah, not like the, I remember the first time watching it since saying that, scene, I was like, I knew it was him the whole freaking time. <laughs> I was just like, oh, shit. White guy, woods, shotgun, don't trust him. Can't be, can't be yeah. right. Nothing good can come out of this. Don't trust a blondie in the woods. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Jason's got blonde hair, technically. I've been told I have ditchwater blonde hair, so. Saying, <laughs> be more trustworthy though. You'd probably be too high to. <laughs> There's no thing. way, no such thing. <laughs> Chilling, that'd be good. <laughs> Hang on, you're picking up. All they heard was water swimming. Can you hear Yeah. So the part when they first pull up to where they think was swimming. Mm-hmm. Does Does he shoot out his? Uh, is it what? Oh, in the beginning, the jeep. Does he shoot out the jeep's light? He's not in the, when when they first get to the place where they go swimming. When the jeep breaks down, his lens it was the passenger side lens. The light breaks. The glass shatters. Did he? Did the guy shoot it? I think he used his powers. Yeah, I think he like telekinetic. Oh. I mean, I guess at, I guess at first I thought he shot it. You know, because you don't know necessarily that he has these powers yet, but. <clears throat> All right, guys, I got a confession. I threw a rock at it because they wouldn't let me come with them. Because <laughs> right in the beginning, when the guy walks into the back room, all the shit's flying everywhere. Like this pipe is wiggling, doors are flying. So you think it's like supernatural ghost. Right. Maybe something yeah. happened to the truck where all of a sudden this, it's stalled or it just went completely dead. You don't know. Right. Never had any problems. 
he had problems with. He was just lying because those girls there. <laughs> that, that's just one of his lines he uses. The truck breaks down out of nowhere. She gets scared and cold, and they end up banging in the back. Seat. That's what he was hoping for. I know that type. <laughs> <laughs> And it's, and it's from the, the, what is it, from 1979? That shit was definitely going on. That shit started in like 1972. It's almost like a Texas Chainsaw ripoff a little bit with the face and everything, minus the chainsaw. I, yeah. I can see that, and I can kind of see um, House of Wax, too, just as mm-hmm. far as You can see there's yeah, definitely a inspiration. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that was the, I didn't, I didn't even think of. Uh, Texas Chainsaw uh, should have, but I definitely thought of, um, like I said, House of Wax. Well, and House of Wax works too, because like there was, there's, um, in you know, in the newer movie, there's also like a steel rhubarb kill, I think, to Paris Hilton. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, right. I think it goes like right through her mouth. And then, like, in this old one, like that dude yeah. takes it in the beginning with them. Yeah type of pipe or whatever. So there is some, like, even kill-wise, there's some, like, similarities there. You remember what he just said? He just said Paris Hilton took a hard pipe to the mouth and this dude took a hard pipe to the backside. Yeah. That's that's kind of what I'm talking about, honestly. Dude, this one, when he gets that fucking rhubarb or whatever to his back, like, he doesn't even scream. And uh, it's, like, right in that beginning scene, he doesn't even fucking scream. and like, paralyzed him right away is what I thought. It was really cool because, like, he opens his mouth and you're expecting this, like, huge, you know, little bit scream because she got stabbed in the back, but it's just nothing. It was kind of cool. And then the blood just pouring out of the tube. Yeah, that was awesome. Off. That was good. Yeah. I noticed that in this movie, like, a lot of the characters really didn't scream a whole lot. Like, there were times, like, he was picking people up and putting them, against, you know, pinning them against the wall, and, like, there was no sound. Like from you know a victim or like very little sound. There's a part where he picks dude up from the bottom and picks him all the way up like Undertaker or some shit, and it's so cool. It's like dude, this guy doesn't even flinch. It's like no struggle. He's just like fucking like like you know. It looks like he really fucking did it. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It was, but it was, it was super strong. Like on that extra whole kind of stuff. Well, he's a big tall dude. When you see him. Hulking over everybody, you know, talking with them. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome, intimidating. It's like the, built. It's here. like it's like what the old dude from Phantasm did before he was taken on like cemetery gigs. Man, he was fucked. That like that's how big that dude is. <laughs> the tall man. The tall man. He's tall. <laughs> <laughs> What was your guys um? So what was everybody's take on this movie? Like this was my first time watching. I fucking had a blast. I thought it was creepy as all hell. Like the same scene. Shit. They were like, just open their mouth and just look around. It's creepy as fuck. That oh, one man. mannequin that comes out of the uh, in the beginning of the closet or wherever the hell it is. She's this yeah. distorted woman's face, just yeah. like just screaming at you. Yeah. That was fucked up. Dude, the, the tones and the soundtrack of this movie are the shit. Like, even, like, in the beginning of the movie, there's, like, this weird uppity, like, circus music while, like, you know, the credits are going up and stuff. And then the movie starts, and there's, like, these high-pitched and, like, super, you know, low-pitched. It's it's really cool. Why do people go to these gas stations? <laughs> That's what I'm wondering. Man, Boy, he had a tire. He was probably looking for air. You go to a gas station for air. <laughs> oh, God. Your tire. Why is it all these like run down, beat up stations though? Oh, and had that station in the middle of nowhere. That's how it is, man. You ever been through those parts? Nah, nah. Me and Greg stopped somewhere in Mississippi on our way to New Orleans once. We got the fuck out real quick. <laughs> it was like fuck five in the morning. Way. We were like, "You fuck, let's go." They got a breakfast buffet. We gotta go. It was good though. It was like barbecue breakfast, dude. It was fucking awesome. We didn't get looked at correctly though. No, we did. <laughs> Talk about eat and run fast. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> Hurry up, John. Right. Oh, you boys have a pretty mouth. Check, please. <laughs> <laughs> Can we dance with your dates? Sure, I got <laughs> 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 
<laughs> you know, you know what I felt about this movie too is like these people got real comfortable with the old dude real quick, real quick. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, the car breaks. The, well, he sees them in the woods swimming, naked in, in the water. Which I mean, that's normal. The only difference is one of us would probably had our meat out jerking off when we see them. Like, oh, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> You talked about jerking off in public and the mannequins. Like, what's up? <laughs> I thought thing? it was just your anniversary, man. What's going on? I'm thinking about us. <laughs> that doesn't. Hey, I'm just saying. If you're an old, if you're an old dude in the woods and put <laughs> naked in the woods, yeah, he probably jerks off to everything in the woods. He's a bobcat. <laughs> Bob <It's, laughs> that tree with a hole in it. Okay. Anyone lives in the woods probably does it. You're right. Yeah. Snow White probably you know jills off every once in a while. Off. Never Some tree it. looks pregnant. Maybe <laughs> <company. laughs> But that guy had so much charisma. He was so nice and so talkative. He kind of talked his way into the group. That's how he got everybody to come back to the house. Probably he he did a good job though, because like he was nice and he was like suave about it. But at the same time, like he still had this like creepy like <laughs> undertone where you're like, ah, oh, dude, like. Why is this dude being so nice? <laughs> What's going on? I'm questioning this dude because he's nice. Yeah. And we, are nice. Mm-mm. And the the animatronics that they had in his uh, so-called museum there was mm-hmm. pretty neat. And when they had added that kill with one of the animatron the animatronics, then I can't talk. <laughs> Wait, no. uh, the soldier. Yeah, when the the Indian picks up the. The, the axe or the knife the and the just launches it and nails right in the back of the head. Yeah, yeah. that was cool. I think I said that right. I'm not going to say it again, though. Say what again? I know what I said. Or is it no, the- I didn't. What'd you say? Matt, you're going to see he- Matt's doing this, guy because he's a doctor. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> All right. put it. This- he works in a hospital. What else is he going to do? Doctor. No. Have you ever seen Scrubs, Matt? What? I've seen Scrubs. Boom. Oh. Everybody on there was doctors, besides the janitor. You're a doctor. I'm not a doctor. Well, that's the story I'm telling. He's a doctor. His name is Dr. Matt. His name is last name. Like Dr. Dr. Giggles. Well, I like that. (laughs) Dr. Giggles. (laughs) (laughs) That's how some of those animatronics were laughing and shit in this movie. Mm. It was awesome. They sounded like jokers. I felt like I was at an ICP show. (laughs) And this... Whispering too, because wasn't one of them saying like Irene? Like whispering Irene. Yeah. Oh, they were yeah, talking to you and having conversations. That that's the part that would freak me the fuck out. If I just go in a room and you just fucking hear talking between two mannequins, I mean you know what? Fuck this shit. Yeah. This is for sure one of those movies where I was like, Yeah, I'd never be in that situation. There's no way some old blonde dude comes out of the woods in these overalls. I'm like, fucking back off, bro. <laughs> Six yeah, feet, yeah. bro. <laughs> I'm scared. Why, I got this museum you can all check out. No one comes to it anymore. <laughs> mm, no. like, dude, I don't have clothes on right now. As you can see, I'm swimming where you used to charge. It's a free country now. <laughs> Yeah, I used to charge nice. 75 cents when people come and swim in my swimming hole. <laughs> Me and my friend Greg are swimming naked here together. <laughs> <laughs> That's love right there. <laughs> and baby and hey, we were naked together before. You know, and just think none of the events in this movie would have happened if they Football locker room. <laughs> One time. What'd you say, Henry? <laughs> the events in this movie would have happened if they didn't film it that way. I still think Oh yeah, the highway that was built. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. The highway, because he said something. He's mentioned the highway too about how people don't stop there because the highway. They go. They, everybody. Everybody wants to go fast nowadays. Everybody's yeah. in a rush nowadays. He said something like that, which is still true to this day. Fuck that highway. It's but like, here's the thing, though. In the movie, he was when he was killing people, he was turning them into mannequins, right? Mm-hmm. West of all those mannequins were other people that he's killed in the past. And so now they built this highway. His killing ground is pretty much null and void. So he's finally really losing more out of control. 
and he's getting that more person. This or he probably already had the split personality, but now he because he uh, had everything happen. So I bet you those are all their people that he's killed that he could turn into mannequins. Like where does he get all these mannequins from? They just turn out of nowhere. Fell off the back of a truck. Who knows? That would be a cool movie though. Like if they did like a Taurus Trap prequel where he was like showing like yeah dude I'm pretty much like harvesting these people and just making them my friends. Like that would be cool. Mm. <laughs> oh. It would be even cooler as if they did a spoof movie and he starts selling these mannequins to like people like us because we love horror and the mannequins start moving around. <laughs> oh, that would that would be cool. Like they would show all these different fans of the movie and like what they're doing, and the mannequin just comes and kills them in these cool different ways. Dude, It'd be like ABC's of Death, but just Taurus Trap. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's scary. <laughs> C is for convention of horror. <laughs> <laughs> this is definitely better, way better than I thought it would be. Though, like I was thinking, honestly, I didn't know what to think about. I wasn't sure how good it would be. I didn't have high expectations for it. I was just like, it's gonna be, it's gonna be one of those movies. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be entertaining. But I didn't think I was gonna really like it. And I like this movie a lot. I really do. Even it's though- kind of neat too that this was a full moon movie as well. Mm-hmm. Are you guys familiar with Full Moon and their oh. films? Oh yeah, for sure. That's. Uh, that's like right up our alley. Oh yes, start with the late seventies, early eighties. They're all awesome. Yeah. You kind of go in the nineties. You kind of get that weird. Okay, some good, some bad. And later on the later ones, you're kind of like, what? They're doing another evil bong movie or another right. dead man type. It's, it's like I'm really exci- bottom. I'm, exci- I'm excited about the new Castle Freak though. That'd be yeah. Cool. yeah. I met Barbara Crampton. And I talked to her, and she said wow. they were almost done working on it. That's awesome. I just Dude, Barbara Crampton's up there for me, man. She's mm-hmm. there. Yeah. Is she? She was at Scarecon. Yes, she yeah. was. She was at Scarecon Rochester there. Yeah, her table is right across from uh, the director of Terror Fire. No, it wasn't. That's awesome. That's cool. Oh, Damien Leone? Yeah. yeah. She was saying that almost everything's done, I think, because the Pupper Master movie did so well that Little Miss Reich. Now they're trying to do other films from the full and, moon line, and Castle Freak was next. Nice. Didn't the Blade movie just come out? Like a solo for him? Yeah, they, they're doing a solo Blade and a bunch of other films. I don't know if there's going to have a release or, or mostly on their online site, probably. That's cool. That's cool. Oh, I love the Puppet Master films. <laughs> oh, yeah. I like The Little is Right a lot. It like, totally brought back the series in a real way. That was so fucking gory, guys. That was insane. Yeah. All the different puppets cutting dicks off, like, and decapitating people. God. Oh, Jesus, man. All right, guys. I got some. I had some horrible news. Fucking Nicholas bitch ass Cage. Oh, here we go. <laughs> He's gonna be in a Willy Willy Wonka's Wonderland. It's supposed to be like a horror type. Movie. Yes, I want to see this. I heard it so. I heard things about it. I guess we'll have to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, we gotta make Aaron watch it. Hell yeah, dude! You you sit you semi liked Mandy, kind of. Admit it. Admit I, it. I, Come on, Mandy was fucking awesome. No, I said he had a cool shirt. That's all I said. Oh dear God! <laughs> and the chainsaw, like the killing scene, the chainsaw killing scene, whatever was cool. But other than that, I didn't like oh yeah, that, that, yeah, that chainsaw scene was that yeah, was gotta cool. give it up a little bit, dude. Come on. Did you but see what, the color out of color out of that was the color out of out of shape or whatever it was that he was in. Out of space. Out of space, I, yeah. I haven't seen it yet, but like I really want to. Like one of my favorite fucking good. One of my favorite movies of all time. Uh, I think it was like eighty five or was or maybe eighty eight. Was uh, the curse with mm-hmm. uh, Will Wheaton? Yeah, and like from what I understand, like it's because that was kind of based off some Lovecraftian stuff, and, and yep. um, that's essentially what Color Out of Space is. So. Mm-hmm. They did an older one too called Die Monster Die with I think it was Karloff. No, not Karloff. Uh, who was it? Fuck, I don't remember. But it's similar to, similar to that. Yeah, and Colorado Space is similar, very similar to the Curse movie where everything starts changing and everything. And uh, Aaron's favorite ca- uh, actor Chris, uh, <laughs> is in it. And he does a great job. I thought it was awesome how it played off and everything. Very, very, very low craftian. 
Oh. Okay, cool. It's because he does good movies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Con Air, watch it sometime. No, I, <laughs> I, I, I don't know if I've ever seen that movie or not. Probably not. I told you guys what two movies I've seen, and I think I liked it, but it wasn't because of Nicholas Bitch Ass Cage. And I refuse to watch anything else he's in unless it's horror related because you asked him if was going to make me do a fucking podcast on it because you know how I feel about him. Which is. <laughs> No, I'm not watching that. I'm not watching Eight Millimeter either. You've been trying to tell me to watch that movie for like two years. She watched the Wicker Man remake. <sighs> Snake. Snake Eyes, man. Now you get next. It's gonna be watch that. What the fuck is the movie where he was the the skull shit on fire? Ghost Rider. Fire. Yeah, I'm not watching that bullshit either. Is he gone in sixty seconds? That was one of the ones I actually liked because of the. The women in the cars. They probably had yeah, nothing. Yeah, I knew it. I fucking knew it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Especially in the cars. <laughs> and uh, face yeah, I still, I still think the world of you, just so you know. <laughs> I appreciate that. And uh, what was the other one? Oh, this is where all the mannequins fall on the chick. Oh, uh, face off? Yeah, face off. Oh, face off, dude. Face off's awesome. Uh, yeah. Again, I enjoyed that movie, but again, probably more because of John and Nic- Nicholas Cage. And I just... Oh, Travolta was a bad man, pajama, especially when he was like portraying the bag. You know, like, he was awesome, dude. That was before Scientology. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> that, yeah, yeah. Travolta's a good guy. He is. He is good. He's a great dancer. Yes. I like you. You played a woman once too. Did you really? Oh, yeah. Hairspray. Oh, that's right. That's talent. He did it well, you know. What him, Robin Williams, uh, you know, Dustin Hoffman. That's about, that's Ooh, it. Yeah. That's a short list. <laughs> no, you, you're forgetting uh, Wesley Snipes. Oh. Tu Wong Fu. <laughs> tu Wong Fu. That was uh, Patrick Swayze and what, John Leguizamo too. What was the what was the basketball movie? Joanna Man. Joanna Man. Yeah, I did. That's, Miguel that's Mears, Jr. Yeah. From yeah. Return of the Dead. They're forgetting white chips. Come on now, guys. The white <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that was so good. <laughs> I'm Jill. I'm you saying. Are you guys offended by that? White chicks? Yeah. No. <laughs> They're doing white face in it. I know. Well, no, because I've seen online people, people were, pro- were complaining about that movie now, some people. Uh, whatever. Really? Yeah. No, I, don't, I thought the movie was fun. I thought it was hysterical. Oh, that dance off that they had was fucking hysterical. Yeah, dude. dude. Terry Crews. Terry Crews. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, he did. He was hilarious. 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 Yeah. Oh, shit. Shit, 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 fuck. All right, I guess we should talk about Tourist Trap some more, guys, and some more horror stuff. <laughs> So, Tourist Trap, 1979, is based on a true story um, about people getting themselves into shit because they're going places they don't want to be going. They're being nosy. They're following an old guy that they don't even know, a ranger, in a weird town. Stranger danger, that's where that started right there. Yeah. Stranger danger. A secluded roadside museum. That museum must have been trash if they built a highway for people to pass it. You gotta think about it, really. Like, if it was a really dope museum, if you had some, what do the kids say now? If it was, they wouldn't, have, they wouldn't have had that. Uh, you know, they wouldn't have had a highway going over. They would have had a road going right to it with a bunch of food spots and everything else and memorabilia from the museum. But nah, that museum sucked. That's that's his fault. That's uh, the old dude's fault. Him and his brother. I mean, you gotta consider what he was working with, man. He's in the middle of nowhere. What the fuck was he really going to show you? Mannequins. A bunch of mannequins. Well, look at uh, yeah. the um, House of Wax remake. That house that House of Wax was in the middle of nowhere. Even in the town. Oh. All secluded and everything. Again, that's how it's here. That's how- you usually have to put him in the middle of nowhere. If you put it like, in the middle of a city, how are you going to... You can't plan anything. It's like, oh, here comes a drive-by. <laughs> Here it comes. <laughs> Here are just some random people walking by this tourist trap. It's like, nope. You got to have in the middle of nowhere. You got to put your killer and your victims like in a secluded area. So, therefore, they have no chance to run or in a place where it's like wilderness. 
you got you got, you do have a point. I mean, it, it makes plenty of sense. I'm just saying, if his, if his museum wasn't so trash, trash, we wouldn't be having this issue. Like you name a slasher that has it's in a public area. Candyman. I mean, really public, like in the middle of like a tons of people. Got it. There isn't because all of your slashers are all in like a secluded area. Even like the ones that are like in malls, like Chopping Mall or uh, Hide and Go Shriek or those type, the mall is closed. So therefore, it's empty. So you have all these secluded areas. So you, that's why the killer needs to go around and stalk. If you put them in a public area, it's like, oh, that person just got killed. You're forgetting about the opening sequence of uh, Scream 2. Oh, yeah, in the movie theater. Yeah. All right. in, in, the, uh, in the bathroom and in the uh, actual theater itself. That's right. I forgot about that one. That was cool cameos by those two. Jane but the King majority of Slash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 99 point. 99.4. <laughs> I do get what you're saying. No, no, I, I get what you're saying. It needs to be secluded. It needs to be a little bit more scary. The movie has the movie. You know, it just, I don't know. You got to stop getting yourself in these situations, is all I'm saying. Stop going in the middle of nowhere. What? Here's another fucking stupid ass thing. This dude needs to be punching his fucking face. Who has a vehicle with a spare tire and the spare tire has no air in it? What the fuck is the point of even bringing it? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, man, I got a spare, but it's flat. <laughs> So you just have rubber? You have rubber in the back of your car? <laughs> you just brought this because you took up all that fucking space? <laughs> oh, my God. He's dead in his mouth. Twice. Well, you know he wasn't getting any play that night. Nah, because he's stupid. Doing some stupid shit like that. He cock-blocked himself. And wasn't he the only dude there? Was, no, there was one other dude. There was two of them. There was two dudes. The one mm -hmm. with the tire and the other one driving the van. They were in different uh, cars and shit. That's right, that's right. I forgot about that. Well, do you see what happened to the one that fucking drove the car? He got killed first. It was it's his fault this all happened. You blame him? He killed, you know, scared the shit out of him first and just killed him. Well, he, he was playing with him. It was kind of like like a cat playing with a mouse. Yeah, I'm just going to throw all the shit at him and, you know, oh. throw glass oh. bottles. That's what I, I like that, though. I like, I like when these movies kind of like play with their victims. Either like a physical or mental torture, it's it's fun to watch. In movies, not in real life. I don't know about that bullshit. Mm. I don't think I can stomach it. I probably shit on myself. <laughs> you know who did that in a mean way was Eli Roth with Hostel. Like those first two ones, those were the shit. And they just fucked the whole thing. They were straight torturing people. What'd you say, Henry? Which 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 one was that? Um was it the first or the second one? Oh, uh, that was the first one. Yeah. With her eyeball stick coming out. Yeah. Oh, I had to cut it. Looks like Thousand Island dressing. Uh, <laughs> I'm Use a little creme brulee torch on her. <laughs> yeah. Yo, the, the, the stuff that he's wiped on the girl's face looks kind of like whipped cream. It either looks like whipped cream or it looks like um caulk. Oh, oh those, those plaster. plaster. Those plaster. The pl yeah. Not the can, yeah. That. It was the stuff. Yeah. Oh, what a crossover. Didn't you, send, yeah. didn't you send me a video? Never mind. Oh, I said a question off the air. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. Didn't you send me a video of a girl shooting her butt butthole? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucked up. That's the same shit he's putting out of her face. That's why it was like fucking burning her face. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, man. Hey, remember that video? Um, oh, my God. She got the peeled banana out of her ass and the other girl tried to catch it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you sent that to me, too. <laughs> what the hell do you guys watch? Holy cow. That's the They're going to show Mannequin Love. That's what they're going to show next. Oh, next. They watch Taurus Trap. Taurus Trap. First bananas out their butts, now it's mannequins. That's natural progression. Yeah. He's right, it is natural progression. <laughs> We're watching the mannequins. Two mannequins, one cup. 
<laughs> I'm not on that. I would watch What's that? that? I would watch that. I would watch that. It's just mannequins. Two girls, one cup, a couple times, a few times, a handful of times. So, you watch that shit more than once, dude. <laughs> Honestly, he forgot what happened, so he had to watch it again. <laughs> yeah, well, three seconds further. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my pause it last time. Go. Most of yeah, the- I, I throw. I threw up the first time I watched it, dude. I fucking threw up, dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ten seconds in, it was like. <laughs> <laughs> I think I only watched it like once, maybe twice alone. But every other time I watched it was because I was trying to <laughs> watch it alone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you did. Isn't that normal? <laughs> Dude, I stayed off to it a couple times, and then I told people about it. <laughs> That's what we heard. You beat off to it. Those girls look like ice cream machines, man. <laughs> oh, their parents must be proud. Uh, Go ahead, Henry. Jack up in there. Remember <laughs> those. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember both watching it wearing 3D glasses, eating peanut butter out of a jar. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, dude. I'm going to throw up right now. You gotta yeah. see, Stop. I got to see if that video is still up there. It's not, obviously, it's not. you're not showing the actual video on YouTube, but I got to see if that video is still up there because that's hilarious. That's something that would be nice to put into the archives. Pull out of the archives and put out there again. You know what I mean. Yeah. That's not what the world needs right now, man. <laughs> That's exactly what the world needs. <laughs> yeah, make a lot of people are at home right now. A lot of people are just doing podcasts or whatever they're doing with their friends. Now would be a great time for someone to release three girls, two cups, or four girls. <laughs> people are going to watch it. They should keep adding girls and just having one cup. Three girls, two quarts. Oh. Ooh, yeah, add the dad. <laughs> One point. I'm sure Henry would watch it at least four times again. Oh, man. Who fills up the court first? Yeah, you win. Then they win a prize. <laughs> Here you go. You get a banana in your butt. Squirt it in your mouth. <laughs> We're going to make yourself a banana sundae. Here you go. You guys yeah, ever not... Anybody yeah, ever wonder what, Anyone ever wonder what happened to that cup? I hope they cleaned it. <laughs> huh? So for two hundred and forty-six dollars, it probably goes over to the guys' set, and they eat it. <laughs> it's playing Ron Jeremy's house. <laughs> he doesn't have a house anymore. <laughs> <laughs> now he's doing new. He's doing new movies now in the, in the jailhouse. Yeah, he's doing man in man in prison movies. <laughs> I heard those girls teach kindergarten now. Crazy what they're teaching in schools these days. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to add together, gr- boys and girls. Two <laughs> girls plus one cup equals... Uh, A equals COVID-19. They aren't wearing a mask. But they probably can't get it because they did all that. But that's how you prevent COVID-19. Yeah, it's like a gonorrhea now or something. I don't know. The nightmare shop froze. Them. Hopefully they'll be back. I'm going to pause this for a second. You guys are back. Oh, guess I'm going to pause it. Anyway, so we were talking about two girls, one cup. We're going to be talking about the tourist trap. Both are based on true events. Uh, (laughs) I love when movies say it's based on true events. events. Like, okay. okay. Man, tourist trap really happened. Yeah, that's how I sell them. That's how I sell tickets. Yep. Yeah, hell yeah. Of course. But tourist trap really happened. I know because a guy that lives like six blocks down, the crackhead, he told me. The tourist trap is a true story. Crackheads don't lie about stuff like that. Yeah, it's always the return of living dead that really happens. <laughs> that only happens what? So the return of living dead is basically a story. It is. just crackheads. It's a tur- return of the <laughs> They get out of prison. When they get out Crackheads of- in a warehouse. <laughs> Start stealing their own shit and trying to sell it to you. They fell in the janitor's closet and shit got real. They do the number, man. You guys see Rave to the Grave? Mm-mm. Oh, uh-huh. God, that movie was bad. I haven't seen it. It could have been good. Mm. 
there's a lot they needed to change to make that movie good. Yeah, but I like how they, they made the, the, the trioxin. They made it into a party drug. Yeah, they turned the tar man shit into a drug. Like, really? Let's have, let's eat, everyone eat tar man shit to a drug. And he was, he was trying to hitchhike to go to the grave. Yeah. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> Like I didn't mind the fourth one that was uh, Necropolis, but I, uh, I didn't care for it. Like yeah. the, uh, what's it called again? I'll probably uh, part four was Necropolis. What's no? And what's five called? was Raid to the Grave. Raid to the Grave. What's the whole Shwega Shwang called? It's uh, Return of the Living Dead. You have <laughs> one, two, and three, and four and five were actually sci-fi channel flicks. And four was called Necropolis, and the fifth one was called Rave to the Grave. Nice. Oh. The third one was awesome with the government testing with the whole love story. The third story. one's great, yeah. Yo, you know what's cool about Weaponizing him. That movie made me a necrophilia. <laughs> wow. That's, that's... That movie would make you love the dead, for sure. Because, uh, I don't know. Fucking hot. Time out. Did you say that movie made you one? Or would make you one, or could make you one. No, I said it did, but you would have to see the movie to understand. Yeah, I gotta see the chicken, it, dude. <sighs> That's what it is, guys. We're we're disgusting. That's all it takes. They go, oh, man. Yeah, but she looked good as hell. You gonna hit it? Might as well. She's not that dead, man. As long as a couple <laughs> minutes ago, she changed quick. <laughs> huh? She did porn. She was still warm. Oh, she was still warm. Oh, <laughs> oh, I was close. But was I was actually, with this tourist trap thing, I like it's towards the end more. But how he, they have all the mouths opening from the mannequins, like they're yelling. I thought that was I say all the man, those mannequins were all fucked up. They're all scary. They're all yawning and screaming at each other and turning their heads. That's entertainment, though, man. That, it, oh, it is. But back in the like seventy nine, that was pretty fucked up. That was pretty cool what they did. Oh. Yeah. Huh? Well, we weren't born then, man. Only you remember that. You got to remember. That's 40 I was born in 78, so therefore I'm not that old. I, was, I haven't watched it yet. He's lying. No, I'm not. I'm sitting. I was like, wait a minute. Sitting, not <laughs> shitting. What's up with you and poop tonight? First thing, bring up all the shitting stuff. I shit. Girls pooping out bananas. Two girls, one cup. No, the, banana, the bananas in the buttholes was Henry. <laughs> he sent it to you and you brought it up. You could have kept that shit quiet, but nobody like, man, Henry, this girl's pooping out a banana. I brought No, no, no. I brought up the whipped cream. Henry brought up the banana one. I did start. I, I think the two of you need to, like, you know, have a little serious talk with each other about Sundays and shit. <laughs> we do. We yeah. have a lot of these conversations, but you've heard us on Twitch. Oh, I know. I've heard. I've been involved in some pretty weird conversations with you. I, I you're welcome. We're backing that up. Yeah, you're welcome. Damn straight. But yeah, like you were saying, I like the creepiness and the weirdness of this ma- movie, and like with the mannequins, the, the mouth moving, and just crazy shit happening throughout. Especially mm-hmm. towards, towards like the end of the movie when it really started to pick up. I was like, this is a good fucking movie. This is fun, and it's it's so weird, but I love it. the yeah. ending. Is so fucked up. Yeah, and how it ends. Well, it, it makes you. It makes you think. It is. It is that that it like. I remember the first time seeing that, and because it's like you almost just catch a glimpse of it, you know. But I don't know that that ending fucked me up for a little bit. Mm-hmm. You guys want to dive into the ending? How it ended? Don't be shy now. I don't care. Dive. Go ahead. Go ahead, Matt. Dive right in. You use bigger. Yeah, we, do you want to tell you what the ending? Yeah, go ahead. Where she's okay. Well, she the the guy that survived supposedly busts through the door, and the killer turns him into a mannequin, which was all fucked up. And of course, she gives him the axe. And at the end, she's driving away with the mannequins of her friends in this truck with a shit eating grin. So either a, it was all under her head that these mannequins were real, or two is that. She just wanted to keep her friends preserved because now she's fucked up because of this character. So now she's yeah. keeping the mannequins as her friends because they all died. Yeah, yeah. I Ooh, carried no. over. 
I, th- yeah. I think I think it's that because I feel like she like lost her shit. Like, oh yeah, going to see her, going to that, and like watching her friends die. I think she like snapped a little bit and like just didn't want to let go. So she was like, "All right, well, I'm bringing my friends with me. We're getting the fuck." Mm-hmm. I love the shot that like when she's driving away and it stops right before the credits hits. She herself looks like a mannequin. Like, dude, yeah, these are my fucking friends. We're all the same. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And that's what this horrible Photoshop is behind me, people. I'm not professional. I do what I do, and I don't do what I don't do. So that's what this is. Boom. All five of us rolling. Four of us, however many of us there are. One, two, three, four, five. Got to include yourself. (laughs) I was counting the screens. I was counting the screens. Count, 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 count. (laughs) But yeah, this... um, I'm going to jump into a ratings real quick. And I think, Matt, you heard my new ratings. So I think you've been on here since I started the new rating system. I think. I don't remember. I don't recall. But anyways, I do from a negative 10 to positive 10. The reason why I do that is because of a shitty-ass fucking movie, pussy-ass movie called Blood Lake that I gave a negative 6 to that I should have gave a negative 10 to because it was so fucking bad. <laughs> um, Blood Lake, was it? Blood Lake. Oh, yeah, the, the shot on video one. <laughs> Or it's on Tubi if you want to watch it. It's not Surf Sturdy approved. I do not recommend it, but I will never tell you not to watch a horror movie unless Nicholas Cage is in it. Fuck you, Nicholas. Um so yeah, don't watch Blood Lake unless you want to see a shitty movie. Watch the other Blood Lake with uh the Lamp- killer Lamprey Eels. The that was better, but it still wasn't like I watched them back to back. And the reason why I did that is okay, give you a quick quick little rundown. Quick little rundown. <laughs> Is I was doing a podcast. I was gonna get ready for a podcast with my boy James, and the movie we chose was Blood Lake. I forgot why, just because the title. I think I don't know how we found it, but anyways, because the title maybe we scrolling through Tubi. So he watched it. I think the day before, and I watched it the day of the podcast. I watched the Attack of the Lamprey one. He watched the shitty slasher one, and that's what we were supposed to be doing. So I, you know, how I posted in the group like what movie I'm watching. So he was like, "Yo." He hit me up and go, you watched the wrong movie. <laughs> I, was like, I was like halfway through it. I was like, I'll just watch the other one right after. So we decided to do that back, back. You know, I did that. Watch those back to back because we ended up doing them later. Worst fucking three hours of my life. <laughs> the the Lamprey one was, um, it was better. But as of like right now, because 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 of these two movies, I'm doing a list of the movies I've seen for the first time this year. No matter what year they came out, I'm doing two lists now bottom 10 and top 10 because of those movies i made a bottom 10 list because of those two fucking movies and i know the one blood like the slasher shit is gonna stay on that list the other one may get knocked off and it's only for again, like i said movies i've seen this year it can't be sequels and it can't be remakes it has to be like the original as far as from what i know it can't be a remake like if i don't know it's a remake that's different but yeah so that's cool that's how that goes and i don't even know why i went on that fucking tangent i forgot Oh, I'm talking about the ratings. <laughs> negative 10 to positive 10. That's why it's a negative 10 to a positive 10 now. And um, how many topless man- mannequins would you guys give this movie? Matt, we'll start with you. <clears throat> oh, this was a great slasher. I'd give this one probably eight topless mannequins out of 10. Positive eight. Positive eight. Nice. Nightmare shot? I would give it positive six. <laughs> Post mannequins, really good uh, slasher, awesome soundtrack, which we sell at the Nightmare Shop LLC.com. So nice. forget about that. Check it out. And uh, yeah, six topless mannequins. Nice. I think I'd give it seven and a half, seven point five topless mannequins. I I'm I don't know. As I get older, I, I watch more and more slasher and like. This was like um, I watched like earlier this year for the first time, and uh, I was like super happy with it. I, I remember like telling people, I was like, "You need to check this movie out. It's really good." And talking about it within like our kind of local group, um, but uh, it's it's I, I I give it a seven a seven and a half out of out of ten. Nice. Thank. Yeah, I, 
I would I do recommend House of Wax, though, Henry. It is even though Paris Hilton's in it, and I know how much you love her, but it's the original, the original no. House of Wax is dope too. Yeah, the original is awesome. I wish I gotta watch both. I gotta watch the original, but I do recommend I do recommend the remix. That's what I did see. But this one, I'm gonna give it a I'm gonna give it an eight as well because I had I had a lot of fun with this movie. I love how weird and crazy it got. Like, it got weirder and crazier throughout the whole fucking movie to where you're just, like, almost surprised. Like, what the fuck is going on now type of deal? But it held it together. It started out a little slow, but then, like, after that, it just kind of went. And I like the I like the pace that it went because if it would have went too fast, this movie would have been over. It's an hour and a half, so it's, like, too much shit would have happened too quick, and then it's like, what the fuck? So, yeah, I give it a solid eight. Search thirty approved. I do think you should watch it. I'm. I would rewatch it. I don't know how soon I'd rewatch. It. I mean, technically, I watched it you know, three times today. <laughs> because of, well, two and a half because of, for the show. Like I watched it earlier in the day, but I wasn't really paying attention. Then I watched it again. Yeah. My wife, she fell asleep. And, uh, have it on now. So. so yeah, I would re. I would re like sit down and rewatch it again though but i just don't know how soon like it's not for me it's not one of those movies i can go right back to and rewatch like say like in a couple of weeks it might be a little bit like, if i'm on someone else's show or if somebody wanted to see this movie that's never seen it wanted to sit down and watch it it'd be like one of those kind of rewatches on like yeah a, a friday the 13th i can throw that on you. as a matter of fact there's a movie that i watched earlier this year called intruder which i know matt knows about the movie intruder i think we did a podcast on actually didn't we hmm? Oh yeah, so you do know about the movie. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that train to Busan with you. I keep telling you about it. Oh, I never saw it. No, I, I, why we did a podcast on that as well. I don't remember. Yeah, I, don't, I told you about Intruder and I told you about Curtains. I did. I watched Curtains. See the thing with Intruder and Curtains though, I watched those like right away ish. But Train to Busan, I will admit, I will admit. It took me about two years to watch it, but I watched it and I fucking loved it. It's awesome. It's not my fault. Peninsula. What the fuck took you so long, man? There's no excuse. None. COVID-19 <laughs> took me so long because I was preparing for it because two years ago, I had a feeling something crazy was going to happen. Let me get prepared, <laughs> healthy, and then boom. You know, I watched it earlier this year and then what happens? A lot of crazy shit happens. I don't know. Did I watch was it this year or last year? When I, I don't remember when I watched it. I think it was the end of last year. Because if it was this year, it would have made my it would have made my top ten list. It would have probably been one of my top ten lists. Anyways, going back, Intruder. I'm going to rewatch that again soon because I really did enjoy that. That's what I was getting at with that. So, I guess we can kind of wrap up. No condom intended, but um, any. Heard me right. Heard crazy. Dude, I love it. I had to say it. I had to do this. But, um, <laughs> anything you guys want to plug? Matt, I'll start with you. If you got anything you want to plug, go right ahead and plug it. And then Nightmare Shop. And I'll throw out my plugs. And then I'll end the recording. And if we got more shit to talk about, we can after the recording. Cool. <laughs> All right. Well, you can catch me on YouTube, which is uh, You and Your Horror Movies. Uh, movie reviews, collection updates, showing off a lot of horror collectibles. Movies, toys, memorabilia, all that fun shit. I'm also on the uh, Cinema Attack podcast. There's going to be some changes because right now the Horror Affiliate Network is going through, going through some changes. So therefore, we're still on right now on it, but down the road, we don't know what's going to be happening to that hosting. So you can also catch me on Instagram, you and your horror movies, all one word. So yeah, that's my plugs. That's his plug. Plug it in, plug it in. Alexa. Simon says, go follow Matt. Go follow Matt. Okay. Go follow Matt. Go follow Matt. Whoa. Stalker. Already. That's weird. No, she said that. When you said that, it picked up the line and then it said that. (laughs) <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Nightmare Shop, you guys can go plug your stuff too. Yeah, totally. Uh, we're the Nightmare Shop from St. Louis, Missouri. You can find us at the Nightmare Shop LLC.com, on Facebook and Instagram at the.nightmare.shop, at Twitter at underscore nightmare underscore shop, 
Um, we sell anything, horror merchandise, we can get to you. And uh, we also tour at a bunch of cons. Uh, none of them are canceled yet. Just figuring out safe ways to do them. Uh, and we're going to rattle them off real quick. Uh, the first one, we got Days of the Dead, which will be uh, July 17th through the 19th. So that's coming up here. And they have, like, really good guests, actually. It's most like, it's a couple big people from, like, the Child's Play series. Richard and- Dreyfuss, Brad Dourif. Oh, wow. Fiona Dourif's going to be there. Catherine Hicks. Yeah, and then uh, shortly after that, we have uh, Midwest Monster F- Fest, September 5th and 6th, and we got, like, the guy that did uh, Leslie Vernon that's going to be there. Yep. Um, we had um, CJ Graham's going to be there. Lene JJ Cohen's going to be there. <laughs> Hell, yeah. And then in September, again, we got in St. Louis the Arch Halo Vampire Ball. Um, we're going to be set up that Friday for uh, the Bloody B- Boutique. And that's going to be on um, September 11th and 12th. And the 12th is going to be a vampire ball dress up um, like authentic gothic vampires. And there's going to be cool DJs like DJ Virus and all this cool shit at the Castle Loma in St. Louis. So if you're in there, uh, tickets are available. And then later in September, um, the looks like the 10th and the 11th, um, actually, that's, is that October? that's October. That's it's the 10th yeah. and the 11th. Um, in Champaign, Illinois, we're doing the history of horror con. So that'll be like, you know, that'll be a big thing too. That's kind of more of a maybe right now. There's some things up in the air with it. But yeah. uh, as of now, all those are still on. Yeah. So uh, it's just those. And like you said, the Nightmare Shop LLC.com for all your best horror merch. Dope, dope. Alexa, Simon says go follow the Nightmare Shop. Go follow the nightmare shop. Go false. Goofballs. That's yeah. fucked up, Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, anyway, go follow the nightmare shop everywhere. Go follow Matt everywhere. Um Henry doesn't he has social media, but not like a thing about Bob. He's part of the Horror Research 30 thing. So follow Horror Research 30 everywhere and anywhere you can. I have a Facebook group where you can feel free to share anything and everything horror related, including your own projects. I have a Facebook page that's just for the podcast. From here on out, I'm just going to be posting my podcast on there. So if you want to hear more about the podcast and the news and whatever goes on with the podcast, it'll be going on the Horror Research 30 page. Not in the group. That's just for like a bunch of just random shit and random horror shit. And again, your own stuff. Um, I'm on YouTube, Horror Research 30, where you can see... You can see us now. You can see us. You can't just hear us. Now you can watch us. You can see our crazy gestures and all kinds of crazy shit and some give me some funny shit going on. Um, I said my YouTube channel. Everywhere you can listen to a podcast, you can hear me. Sometimes you hear us sing. Maybe not today. Sorry, folks. My album's not out yet. But uh, yeah, Spotify, iTunes, Podbean. Everywhere you can listen to podcasts, you can hear us. Um... Twitch, I will be going on again soon. I know I keep saying that, but uh, I'll be on there again soon. Don't worry, people. Horror underscore with underscore sir underscore sturdy. And last and definitely not least, and most importantly, as far as my social media things go, if you ever want to be on the podcast with us, shoot me an email, horror with sir dot sturdy. Again, that's horror with sir dot sturdy at gmail.com. We do interviews, random horror chats like this fucking episode. Movie reviews like this fucking episode, and it's gonna be entertaining like this fucking episode. And I'm gonna say fuck you, Nicholas Cage, like I do in damn near every episode. So yeah, that's where you can follow any of us. Thank you guys all for coming on. I'm gonna hit the stop record thing, but uh, stay put if you can. And as always, I'll see you in your nightmares. Henry, bring the mannequins. Ha, 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 ha.